The power of the dog depicts different men. Sensitive Peter, kind George, brutish Phil. They give us a piercing look into the many dynamics of how to be a man. Masculinity, manhood, manliness. Boys grow up well aware of its pressures. Its definition tells us it's the set of attributes, behaviors, and roles traditionally associated with men and boys. Yet, what happens when your outwardly display doesn't quite align? Are you less than? Phil lives in literal dirt and a constant need to prove he's the roughest, toughest leader of his wolf pack. He projects machismo through cruel remarks. Guess he could have taken her out without first putting a sack over her head. Unlike some others. And a disregard for authority. You're gonna want to keep your distance and just off the horse. Where Phil is macho and mean-spirited, George is compliant and kind. His brother's sidekick for too long He's gotten used to being helpless when Phil taunts those around him. You got that, boys? Only for the drip. <laughs> now get us some food. George merely glances down, waiting for the moment to pass. Peter's presence immediately sets off Phil, who bullies him for standing out in a room full of cowboys. George quietly apologizes for his brother's behavior and develops a liking for Peter's mother, Rose, setting off a storm. Phil takes his brother's marriage badly. Come again? We were married Sunday. Rose is a threat. She represents the end of the fraternal family life he's known. He won't admit it, but he's very reliant on his brother. You gonna say something? No, not without my brother. He's used to them sharing a bedroom, like kids. Her arrival changes that, so he goes to war. Well, Brother Phil, we had such a nice trip. I'm not your brother. You're a cheap schemer. Extending no kindness, he breeds a toxic environment that slowly poisons her. While George is a stable, supportive source of masculinity, Phil spits what happens when it sours. He projects textbook, toxic masculinity. Masculinity comes with countless cracks and wrinkles, and as this film shows, most men hide from themselves in order to conform. That repression can lead to toxic masculinity. Suppressing emotions or masking distress, maintaining an appearance of hardness, using violence as an indicator of power. These expectations are restrictive and traumatizing. Phil is evidence of that. He believes he's behaving like a man should. Over time, it becomes clear he's actually in a masculine crisis. No wonder he cuts through anyone unlucky enough to get close. He's compensating. Bookish Peter has his own quirks and hobbies. His obvious sensitivity made to the outside eye indicate he needs to overcome the hardened masculinity that surrounds him. Yet, as he adapts to his new home, it becomes clear that, unlike Phil, he's comfortable with who he is. <laughs> Despite their bad start, Phil unexpectedly warms to Peter. Peter, you kind of got off on the wrong foot. He helps him get a hand of life on the ranch. This causes Rose to spiral even further, whilst the unlikely camaraderie changes everything. Can't Peter go with you today? Well, he could, but him and Phil have kind of paired up. I don't want that. I don't want him to be with Phil at all. It unlocks secrets and hidden desires. Phil's loneliness emerges when his hyper-masculine ego deflates. The snow-it-all cowboy is deeply confused, fascinated by his old friend, Bronco Henry, who was so perfect and manly it hurts. At night, he rubs down Bronco's saddle and bathes in a secret spot with his handkerchief. Phil is a man desperately trying to trample his sexuality by putting up a rough front to all around him. He's playing a game of wits. In Peter, Phil meets his match. Most people look at it and just see a hill. Where Bronco looked at it, what do you suppose he saw? A barking dog. The hell, you just saw that now? Just as he softens and lets him in, 
Peter goes in for the kill. Practically everyone in the film struggles with the skin they live in. They are uneasy, yet unaware they share the burden. Patriarchy is the crippling collective monster, leaving longing and loneliness. Clearly, we see there are more ways to be a man. It isn't about traits to tick off, but a way of being that supports those around you. Throughout history, the idea of the perfect man has evolved, but the groundwork has projected a similar problematic ideal. As Esther Perel puts it, masculinity is often framed as a performance. All over the world, men go through multiple rituals and experiences to prove and test their masculinity. Our culture thinks that we are born women and that we become men. The power of the dog shows the repercussions of that. Rose wilts under the influence. The surrounding toxicity spurring her on to intoxicate herself. George distances himself from his brother and the ranch, bringing Rose as a safe haven. I want to say how nice it is not to be alone. Phil absorbs its venom, then decomposes under the pressure of living a lie. It's only pragmatic Peter who takes matters into his own hands to save his mother. For what kind of man would I be if I did not help my mother? If I did not save her? <laughs> 